AD audio is this weird new trend that's popped up over the past few years. If you ask people their opinion of it, some love it, others hate it, and of course, most people don't even know what it is. So what is AD audio, and what can we learn from it? The basic formula behind AD audio is pretty straightforward. Take a popular song and spin it around in circles using virtual surround techniques. I have a whole video on virtual surround if you want to know the science behind it. The end result can be pretty darn cool, at least when listened to on headphones, which I recommend doing for this video as well. When everything aligns, you get this crazy illusion of music coming from this invisible speaker that's circling you. It can be genuinely uncanny, and that so-called outside-the-head effect is highly desirable by people mixing immersive content, even though many of them are quick to scoff at AD Audio's success. If AD Audio is so successful, though, then surely we can learn some lessons from it that apply to all forms of 3D audio, right? Right. So let's dive into what makes 8D audio so unique and special. To demonstrate our first lesson, I'm going to play back a few tones in a virtual surround environment. So again, make sure you have headphones on. First will be a 1 kHz sine tone, so a sound source with a single frequency. Next will be a pink noise signal, so a sound source containing all audible frequencies. Try to determine where each sound is coming from as quickly as possible. So as you probably noticed, it's much easier to locate the noise than it is to locate the single frequency tones. I have a video on mixing stereo, and in that video I talk about how our brain determines where sound is coming from. The short version of that is that our brain has several tools it can use to determine direction, and which tool our brain uses depends on the pitch and frequency content of the sound. What that also means is that when a sound source contains a wide range of frequencies, our brain can use multiple tools to determine where the sound is coming from, so it's easier to locate the source. As you've probably already figured out, music contains a wide range of frequencies as well, from low bass notes all the way up to shimmering cymbals. So the first reason why AD audio works so well is because music is inherently broadband, and broadband sounds are easier for our brain to localize. Let's do another listening example, so grab your headphones again. This time we're using pink noise, so a broadband source that should be easy for us to localize. Once again, I'm going to place the sounds in random spots in a virtual surround sound field, and this time each source is going to have a different length. Try to determine where each sound is coming from. Alright, so hopefully you were able to determine what the lesson here is. When a sound lasts only very briefly, it's hard for us to figure out where the sound is coming from. The longer a sound lasts, the more time our brain has to process, and the easier it is to locate the source. Since a typical song lasts somewhere between 2 and 4 minutes, that's plenty of time to locate where the sound is coming from. Of course, a sound doesn't have to last that long. Even a few seconds is better than a sound that is only momentarily audible. So lesson 2 about AD audio is time duration. Longer is better. Time for our third listening example. I'm going to start with a musical signal jumping randomly between spots, then I'll have it smoothly move between those same spots. Once again, try to identify where the sound is coming from each time. The 
no one gets out. Another advantage of sounds lasting longer is that our brain can pull out one more tool to locate the source. And you may have even found yourself using this one during the last two listening examples. That tool is physically moving our head around to try and face the source. We're better at localizing a sound when it's close to directly in front of us, so it's instinctual to look around when trying to find the source of a sound. Unfortunately, unless you're viewing content on something like a VR headset that tracks your head's movement, looking around doesn't do anything. Fortunately though, you can get a similar effect by moving the sound source itself rather than your head. As the sound moves, our brain is able to build a better reference to where the sound is. Obviously one of the primary elements of 8D audio is the slow spinning around your head, so lesson three is that movement is key. The last example is a bit of a weird one, but don't worry, I have a listening test to demonstrate. I'll play back two different examples of 8D audio that I created. Try to determine which one sounds more outside your head. That is, which one sounds like it's coming from the room around you rather than from your headphones. One of the key elements that we use to orient ourselves with our hearing is acoustics. As sound bounces around and reverberates in a room, our brain can use that reverberation to determine the size and characteristics of the space we're in, and even where we are in the room to, in relation to things like walls. The same thing is true with virtual surround. Artificial reverb can be used to give us a sense of where we are in a space, which can add to the illusion. It's a bit tricky though, because we complement our hearing with our vision, and generally our vision is the more dominant sense. So if what we hear doesn't line up with what we see, we tend to fall back on our vision first. That seems like a bust then, but what if we could anticipate where a listener would be when playing our content and set our reverb to match that location? Well, that's essentially what a lot of 8D audio creators do. The most likely location for you to be while listening to a YouTube video on headphones, statistically speaking, is in some form of small or medium residential room like a bedroom or a living room. If I put some convincing room reverb on my 8D audio, there's a decent chance that the reverb will match the space you are physically in, in which case the virtual surround effect will sound super compelling and like it's actually in the room around you rather than coming from your headphones. If you aren't in a room that's reasonably close to the reverb added, then it's basically doing nothing and the audio will sound effectively the same. That's why this trick is a bit weird. It works really well for novelty things like demos and AD audio, but for more serious content like a film or video game, it's generally not worth it. Still, it is a good demonstration of how important acoustics are and how it impacts our perception of sound. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you like this video, if you learned something new about 8D audio, immersive audio, spatial sound, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comments down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, including all of the upcoming videos I have on binaural, spatial, and immersive audio, definitely hit that subscribe button.